and he would not fight its wars. And at that time, the socialists and the, and the lefties, as they were called, Bolsheviks and everything else, were against the war. So when he came back, uh, he got married, he had two kids, and he went to the electrical appliance business. And all the time, hanging out with Ira and George and, and uh, Howard Dietz and Buddy DeSilva and writing light verse for the FBA Conning Tower. And uh, the newspapers used to carry light verse. Every newspaper, there were about 25 of them at that time, not two or three now, owned by two people in the world, you know. Uh, and they actually carried light purse. Well, Yip and Ira and Dorothy Parker, the whole crowd had light purse in there, and they, they, you know, they loved it. So when the crash came and Yip's business went under, and he was about anywhere from fifty to seventy thousand dollars in debt, uh, his partner went bankrupt. He didn't. He repaid the loans for the next uh, twenty or fifteen years at least. Um, Ira and he agreed that he should start writing lyrics. Let's yeah. talk about what Yip is most known for. Finian's Rainbow, The Wizard of Oz. Right here, what do we have in front of us? We have uh, a lead sheet. We are in the gallery of the Lincoln uh, Center for the Performing Arts. And uh, there's an exhibition called The Necessity of Rainbows, which uh, is the work of Yip Harbor. And we are looking at the lead sheet of Brother Can You Spare a Dime, which came from a review called Americana, which uh, in, it was the first review which uh, was, um, had a political theme to it. Uh, at that time, the, the uh, notion of the forgotten man. You have to remember what the Great Depression was all about. It's hard to imagine that now. But uh, when Roosevelt said one-third of the nation are ill clothed, ill-housed, and ill-fed, that's exactly what it was. There's, there was at least 30% unemployment at those times. Uh, and among blacks and minorities, it was 50, 60 percent, and there were bread lines. And uh, now the rich, uh, you know, kept living their lifestyle, but uh, Broadway uh, it, it was reduced to about 12 musicals uh, a year from a prior in the 20s, about 50 a year, okay? So it became harder. But the Great Depression was the dominant fact of life in everybody's mind. And all the songs were censored, I use that uh, uh, loosely, by the music publishers. They only wanted love songs or escape songs. So that in 1929, you had Happy Days Are Here Again, and you had all of these uh, kinds of songs. There wasn't one song that uh, addressed the depression in which we were all living. And this show, the Americana show, uh, Yip was um, asked to uh, write a song or, or uh, get the lyrics up for a song which uh, addressed itself to the bread lines, okay? And uh, so he at that time was working very closely with Jay Gorney. Jay had a, um, a um, tune which he had brought over with him when he was eight years old from Russia, and it was in a minor key, which is a, a whole different key. Most uh, popular songs are in uh, major, and uh, it was in a, a Russian lullaby, and it was da 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 da, and. Uh, a, a Jay had, uh, somebody else had lyrics for it. Once I knew a big blonde and she had big blue eyes. She was big blue like that. And it was a torch song, which we talked about. And Yip said, well, could we throw the words out and I'll take the tune. All right. And if you look at Yip's notes, uh, which are in the book <laughs> that I mentioned, you'll see he started out writing a very satiric comedic song. At that time, Rockefeller, the ancient one, was going around giving out dimes to people. And he had a, Yip had a satiric thing about, uh, can I share my dime with you, you know? But then, right in the middle, other images started coming out in his writings. And you had a man in a mill, and the whole thing turned into the song that we know it now, which is here and which I can read to you. And if you, if you do this song, you, you have to do the, the verse because that's where a lot of the action is. Can you sing it to me? 
All right, I'll try. It won't be as good as uh, <laughs> Big Crosby or Tom Waits. They used to tell, used me, to tell me I was building a dream. I was building a dream. And so I so followed, I followed the, mob. the mob when there was earth to plow. When there was earth to plow or guns, or to, guns bear. to bear, I was always there, was always right there. on the job. Right on the job. They, they used, used to, to tell me, me I was building, I was building a, dream. a dream with, with peace, peace and glory, and glory ahead. ahead. Why should, Why should I, I be standing, standing in, in line? line? Just waiting, Just waiting for, bread. for bread. Once I built a railroad, made it run, made it race against time. Once I built a railroad, now it's done. Can you spare a dime? Yep, Harburg singing in 1975. Once I built a tower to the sun, brick and ribbon and lime. Once I built that tower, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? When was this song first played? In 1932, and uh, in the Americana Review, every critic, everybody took it up, and it swept the nation. In fact, uh, paradoxically, I think Roosevelt and the Democratic Party really wanted to tone it down and keep it off the radio because playing havoc with trying to uh, not talk about the Depression, which everybody did. You remember the Hoover thing? Uh, uh, not only the happy days are here again, but uh, two chickens in every pot and so forth. Nobody wanted to sing about the Depression either, you know. Yet Yip Harburg was a supporter of FDR. Yes, uh, but politics are politics, you know, and uh, the thing was that, in fact, historically, this was, I would say, the only song that addressed itself seriously to the Great Depression, a condition of our lives, which uh, nobody wanted to talk about and nobody wanted to sing about, and, uh, and it just swept the uh, nation, and still, here we are, what, 60 years later, it's still sung and it's still pertinent because it still asks a great question which hasn't been answered. Why am I standing in line just waiting for bread? Ernie Harburg, son of Yip Harburg. When we come back from our break, we'll talk about The Wizard of Oz, Finian's Rainbow, and other shows. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue on our journey of Yip Harburg's life with his son, Ernie Harburg, Ernie talks about how Yip Harburg wrote the lyrics to The Wizard of Oz. Actually, Yip did more than the lyrics. Uh, when, they were, when Yip and Harold Arlen were called in to do the score of The Wizard of Oz, it was uh, Yip who had this executive experience in his electrical appliance business and also had become a show doctor. So he, he was, uh, that is when a show wasn't working, you would call somebody in and try to fix it up. He had an overview 
of shows, and he had an executive talent.